If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with a mono black standard discard deck tech for you. This is one I've been working on for a while, ever since I saw that in Eldritch Moon we got not one, not two, three new hand attack spells. Oh, this deck would not be possible without not even just Shadows Over Innistrad block. This particular set. Here, let me jump right into it. So, for instance, one of the ones that we just got was Whispers of Imrakul. <laughs> this is sick. So, for two mana, target opponent discards a card at random, which means they can hit their lands. But, uh, it can be just him to Torok if you have Delirium. That's it. This is him to Torok with Delirium. Otherwise, you know, you're paying colorless into it as well, so you expect it not to be as good, and frankly, they're never reprinting him to Torok. Certainly not in a standard environment. But that can just be so sick. Two mana potentially hit one of their lands? Sign me up. Now, for three mana, we have... Prying questions. Looking like chittering rats over here. Target opponent loses three life and puts a card from their hand on top of their library. So what that means is that in some cases this is just time walk with three life loss tacked on to it. <laughs> Seems pretty good. So you're not going to make them discard the card, which in this format is alright. But you are going to be setting them back a turn regardless. Control decks hate this card, hate this kind of effect. Oh my goodness, that looks so solid um, to play against a lot of decks, really. Uh, basically everything above the level of the really fast aggro decks. And even then, if you're casting this on curve, they're having to put something back. Deprive them of their tempo, deprive them of their answers, time walk them. Now, back to two drops. Yet another Eldritch Moon one, although we're out of uncommons, we're into rares. So, yes, this one has as one of its modes. They reveal their hand, you choose an instant or sorcery, and then they discard it. But you can also use it as creature kill, and you can use it to drain the opponent for two life, at the low, low cost of discarding a card to escalate it. Now, we do have some madness spells in here, and we do have delirium, so we may very well want to pay the discard, pay the escalate cost for that. Now for the last hand attack spell, and this one is the most questionable, to me at least. Duress. Now the reason for this one is because it gives me something to do as a one drop, that is true. We aren't doing much of anything on turn one otherwise. Uh, so this just gives us also some mainboard answers to cards decks about which we worry. We worry about Collected Company, specifically the card Collected Company, and in those decks, Dromoka's Command, and we worry about Seasons Past and Dark Petition. As, and of course this just gives us another answer against the ramp decks which can just overwhelm us. I think that that's enough that it merits inclusion, however it's the most likely to be dead in a given hand. Another reason I play Duress is that it makes turning on Delirium a little bit, uh, happen a little bit more quickly, I guess. Um, so that's certainly something. Now, for... Sorry, Nob. For removal, we have four Grasp to Darkness, because this is a mono black deck. This is just the best black removal spell in the format right now, with the possible exception of Ultimate Price, which doesn't hit Eldrazi and Artifacts, and Multicolor Cards. This is generally applicable, even though it doesn't always kill a given creature. We need something to use against Low to the Ground decks, and Planeswalkers, which is why we have To the Slaughter. So, makes the opponent sacrifice a creature or a Planeswalker, and if we have Delirium, then both occur. I'm running to the slaughter instead of, say, Ruinous Path, partially because it's at instant speed, and partially because we need more instants in order to turn on Delirium. Ruinous Path would give us another sorcery, and we already have quite a few sorceries in this deck. 
And speaking of which, rounding out the removal package, this one's a little bit questionable, I guess. Languish as a four of. Languish is not questionable. Having it as a four of? I'm not entirely sure that that's right, but I am trying it out. We need something to bring in against the aggro decks. This is in the main board now. Perhaps some numbers should be in the sideboard. The more that I look at it, the more that that seems right. And I may be doing this because of the meta over here, just being so low to the ground. And we're already doing so much against higher curve decks. I want to have more answers against lower curve decks. Um, once they've already gotten established, Languish can just wreck their deck entirely. Uh, so that's what we're doing for removal. And uh, this is our interaction suite, I should say. For our creatures, we're going to start off with Phyrexian Arena. This is Phyrexian Arena. <laughs> it's Asylum Visitor. It has madness for the same cost, two mana. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, if that player has no cards in hand, so if they're hellbent, you draw a card and lose one life. We reap the reward of removing all of the cards in our opponent's hand, and use this to draw an extra card every turn. If for whatever reason the card that we get uh, from our opponent's turn happens to be an instant, and we cast it that turn, then we'll be hellbent for our upkeep as well, and lo and behold we'll get to draw three cards over the course of that turn cycle. One regular, one from Asylum, and then another from Asylum. Usually though it'll just be two a turn. When you get to the point where you have no cards in hand, this is your arena, this is your uh, outpost siege, this is the card that keeps you in the game, keeps you from just playing off the top and missing and missing. That's a four of. It's the glue that holds the deck together ultimately. Now we have a one of Fleshbag Marauder. Maybe I go up to two, but I think one is fine. What is this ugly abomination doing in this deck? Well, it is another sacrifice effect, of course. We do have a card that likes to get it back from the graveyard over and over again. It's just, essentially, it is using the creature slot, but it's another interactive spell. It's another kill spell. And... Think of it as to the slaughter that I can keep repeating. I can keep getting out. Uh, and I'll keep getting it out with a card I'll show you in just a moment. We're running Kalidus, Trader of Get, because this is a black deck. Only two of this. I don't know if that's the right number. It is legendary, though, so any more than one and we get diminishing returns. But it's such a good card, it's hard not to run more than one. Lifelink will help us to get back in the game from losing life, both from early aggro and from Asylum Visitor and it turns all of our kill spells uh, into, hey look, we got more tutus. Look at all these tutus. Uh, and of course it can get itself to be bigger, so it can get out of uh, language range. You have a zombie here, you have vampires here. Actually, every single creature in this deck, Kalidus can work with, but you don't have too many creatures in the deck anyway, only eight. Six not counting Kalidus, so that isn't usually what you're playing it for. Uh, now, I mention 8, that means that we have another one of. We have Sidisi Undead Vizier. So this is our Dark Petition. This is Death Touch 4-6. Love it when they give Death Touch to big creatures. I mean, no, I'm not being sarcastic. I, I actually do love it. Uh, exploit. And then, when it's exploited, you get to uh, Demonic Tutor. You get to Dark Petition up. Now, we want this one instead of actual Dark Petition, even though we don't get the Spell Mastery benefit, uh, because we'll be able to loop Sidisi. Now, maybe you do still want Dark Petition, because Dark Petition into Ruinous Path, Dark Petition into To the Slaughter, you know, whatever the case may be, may just be where it's at. I'm trying out Sidisi right now. We do have two Planeswalkers. We have a one of Obnixilis Reignited, because Mono Black deck. It's more life loss, but it's more card draw in a deck that wants to be you know, giving our opponent card disadvantage in the early game and then riding the card advantage in the later game. Plus, since it destroys a creature, it protects us a bit. It has an ult that wins the game. And this is our recursion. We have three Liliana, the last hope. So the plus is interaction. Target creature up to one target creature gets minus two, minus one until your next turn. Fights the aggro decks a little bit. There are three Lilianas, by the way. 
The minus two. Put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, then you re may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So with Fleshbag Marauder, it's every turn you can get it back to make your opponent sacrifice a creature. You'll sacrifice the Marauder, but you'll get it back later, and so on and so forth. Uh, with Sidisi, you just demonic tutor over and over again. That seems like it could be pretty good, <laughs> I'd say. And then the ult just wins the game for you. Put out all of the zombie tokens. And then some. And because we're running four planeswalkers, you know, two unique ones, but four copies, I have Oath of Liliana. It's more removal, and it can give me some zombies from playing planeswalkers. That helps to protect the planeswalkers themselves, which is especially important if Ob or Lily uses their minus first. Alright, so with this being the main board spells, we have, uh, let's see, should be 22, yes, 22 lands. Four of them are Blighted Fen. Very simply, colorless mana, or makes the opponent sac excuse me, sacrifice a creature later on. Uh, I use this largely to fight Emrakul, because if there's an open board on my opponent's side, and hopefully there is, they can cast Emrakul, and I'll still be able to make them uh, sacrifice it because this isn't an instant. It's at instant speed, but Emrakul only has protection from instants. Now that being the case, they'll still get my next turn. Um, fortunately, one important thing to note is that all of my discard spells say target opponent discards a card. Uh, whispers, prying questions, collective brutality, duress, they all say target opponent. So if we get taken over with a mind slaver effect, they cannot make us discard our own hand. I mean, they, they could with some roundabout ways. Collective Brutality, making you paying the Escalate cost, I don't know. You get the idea. But that's just one thing that we can do. There are 14 basic swamps, as you'd imagine, but then we still have four, and we spend those on, this one is uh, dubious perhaps, four Evolving Wilds. Not that we're getting any additional colors, we're obviously not. We're using this both for deck thinning, obviously, and because we want to turn on Delirium, and this makes lands readily turn on. So, getting a sorcery in the yard, that's easy. Getting a land in the yard is now much easier. Creature isn't the hardest thing in the world. Uh, Fleshbag Marauder and Sidisi will remove themselves. Asylum Visitor is only one toughness. It can die fairly readily. You have instants, a few of them, of course. And then four Planeswalkers and an enchantment. So you can get Delirium, certainly, in this deck. And if you do, you will start reaping the rewards fairly quickly. Now, for the sideboard, uh, we have some unique cards in here. To fight low-to-the-ground decks, we have Flaying Tendrils. It's more Languish, basically. I have four Languish, and so I have these in the sideboard. This can let me go up to eight Wrath Spells, effectively, uh, in the deck. And this just gets silly. Minus two, minus two, and it would exile them for three mana. Yeah, that... Well, what can I say? Next we have three copies of Infinite Obliteration for ramp decks, but also for decks that don't run... Like, say, they don't have too many creatures in the deck, so they're relying on the few that they do have. If they happen to be... If they are Esper Dragons, for instance. You know, we take their Ojutai and their Silumgars you know, whatever the case may be for that particular deck. If they're not running too many creatures and those are the wind conditions in the deck, infinite obliteration is where it's at. Ramp and control usually is what that ends up meaning. Uh, next we have... I'm trying this out. There is an instant that's in the format right now that removes the scry 2 but lets me draw two cards for the same cost. Well, it's one in black black instead of two in black. But at instant speed, that may be where I want to be instead of read the bones. Uh, I like the scry too, but the ability to overpower the control decks by end of turn, are you going to counter this or will I draw two cards? Seems like that may be where I want to be, but for right now, while we have read, I'm running that instead. It just gives us a little bit more, uh, you know, if we need to try to beat out the control decks, it's our test spell. If they counter it, well, then that means that it's a little bit more likely that we'll get to resolve a card later on. Um, 
if they don't counter it, we've just drawn two cards with some selection, and that makes that makes it where we'll have more consequential spells later, hopefully. It's like when you're playing Vintage. Do you counter the Ancestral Recall and not have a counter spell up for the next spell, or do you let it go, and then they'll just draw even more, potentially more counter spells to fight you? It's that it's similar logic to that. Next, we have the aforementioned Ruinous Path, only as a two of. It is sorcery speed, I'm not a big fan of that, but it serves as an additional win condition in the deck by getting a 4-4 out of one of your lands. And of course it hits creatures or planeswalkers, so whatever mid-range deck or control deck happens to have planeswalkers that ails you, go for it. And lastly, Transgress the Mind. Seasons passed. I mean, honestly, it's been a while since I've played a deck like this and haven't sighted in Transgress the Mind. It's pretty much just not sighted in against low to the ground decks. Sometimes you'll find that Duress does actual nothing in the match, or it doesn't do enough. Transgress can go in, uh, I, whatever the case may be. You know, if whatever isn't useful in the match, you take it out and sight in Transgress the Mind. Just take away whatever their answer was going to be. And additionally, lastly, there are three more to the slaughters in the sideboard. Only one in the main, three in the side. We can bring those in against a lot of decks. Personally, I'm a big fan of bringing it in against uh, Orzov Control and a lot of the mid-range decks that are running Obnixilis. Uh, just because you know they're going to be running Planeswalkers and they'll also have creatures and maybe, maybe, even on a clean board, you may be able to take out one of their landfolk and a Planeswalker once you have Delirium on. It is instant speed after all. That being the deck, I hope that you enjoy this nice little uh, tempo deck, ultimately is what it ends up being. You keep the opponent off of their plays, while you get a creature like Kalidus, like Asylum Visitor, these especially, and you just keep beating with them. Three power, assuming that the opponent can't do anything because you've stripped their hand and stripped their board, that should be just be it. Again, you're playing the tempo game in a mono-black deck. As a result, this sh won't be as expensive as it could be, to be sure. Obnixilla still isn't cheap. Liliana the Last Hope is definitely not cheap right now. Kalidus isn't cheap. But because the land base isn't multicolored, it at least saves you on that front. So, if you're trying to work your way up to a deck that wants to play Kalidus, uh, but you don't want to spend too much money in standard, you know Kalidus is seeing modern play, you know, why not invest in a deck like this? A deck where you'll get to play standard and not have to invest too much money in the rest of it. In any case, I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, any suggestions, leave them in the comment section below, and I hope to see you in future videos. Take care, Magic Community. I will see you later. Bye-bye.